liberty and justice for all. Um, town Council reports and correspondence. Uh, yes, Chair Lennon. I have a few things I'd like to say. <clears throat> I'd like to give an update on the library. The council heard most of this the other night at the September 5 workshop, but for the viewers at home, I'd like to recap a few things. The Board of Trustees was charged with public education and outreach, and they've been hard at work. They produced a beautiful and informative brochure titled Problems to Possibilities. On August 25, an event in Broad Cove was held to provide information. It was very well attended and well received. Other neighborhood events are being scheduled, and of course, the library tours are continuing throughout September and October. The dates and times are on the website. Meredith Netto, our superintendent of schools, is sending an enthusiastic letter in support of the new library to the Cape Courier. She well understands the value to the school district of partnership with the Thomas Memorial Library and how our community library enriches early reading skills for children. I'm delighted also to say that our former school superintendent <clears throat> Connie Goldman has just submitted a letter in very strong support of the new library and what it means to our community. A private committee has formed and is funding additional outreach. They've been passing out brochures, brochures and flyers, and the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. So if the citizens have any questions or need any for, more information, if they could please contact either myself or Library Director Jay Shermer. Thank you. Other reports, correspondent? Deborah, do you want to say a little bit about the upcoming election? I do, thank you very much. Um, just information for our voters here in Cape Elizabeth, a reminder that the election is going to be held on Tuesday, November 6th. Residents of Cape Elizabeth vote at the high school gymnasium. The polls are open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. On election day, there will be signs directing you down in back of the high school where there will be plenty of parking. I wanted to take a minute to thank the superintendent of schools and the school board for their support of a student workshop on that day. That will allow, again, space outside for parking, and also it will provide us some inside space that we need for various election activities. I have also scheduled the use of the cafeteria. You may remember four years ago at the presidential, we had the cafeteria available to our Cape Elizabeth nonprofit groups for fundraising. We actually had some groups there that talked to residents about um, their different organizations. So I'm very excited that the cafeteria will be available for that purpose. It allows, allows for more room, and it also allows for better flow for the voters in that lobby area between the cafeteria and um, the gymnasium. So if any of those groups if you know that you want a table, please contact me. Um, I'm available here at Town Hall, either by phone or by email, and it will be first come, first serve. Um, and again, it worked very well four years ago. I'm excited that we can do that again. So again, thank you to the school um, for scheduling a student workshop on that day. In terms of voter registration, if you're not registered to vote, proof of identity and proof of residency is required. So if you have a driver's license with your CAPE address, that will satisfy both. Uh, if you are no longer a CAPE Elizabeth resident, I encourage you to go to your town or city hall and register to vote uh, so that you will be all set for the November election. Absentee balloting will be available during the month of October. We're actually going to be setting up this room here in the council chamber during our regular town hall office hours. The deadline to absentee ballot is Thursday, November 1st. So if you know now that you will not be available on the 6th, um, please make arrangements for your absentee ballot. If you go to our website at capeelizabeth.com, we do recap the voter registration laws, absentee laws, how to obtain an absentee ballot. Uh, we will also, as they are available, place the sample ballots not only for the municipal election for council and school board, uh, we also have the library issue and we have the uh, amendment to the charter. Um, those sample ballots along with the state and federal uh, candidates will also, and any state referenda will also be um, on our website. And I expect that information to be available um, in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, just two points of clarification, things that have come up the last couple of years that are kind of interesting is if you, again, live in Cape Elizabeth, you're registered to vote, 
You go to the polls, you can go straight to the incoming lines. Um, the last couple years has been interesting. We've had a lot of folks that have been registered even for years get in the line of voter registration and think that they need to register again. Um, and that's not the case. If you still live here, you're registered here, please just go to your incoming lines. Um, also, there's um, interesting information out that voters somehow think that they cannot go to the polls anymore, that they have to vote absentee. Um, and that is not the case. If we actually have voters that call me and say, I really would like to go to the polls, why do I have to vote absentee? Absentee balloting is for convenience, um, particularly if you're not going to be here on election day. It, if you are a voter that wants to go to the polls, please do so. Again, it's at the high school gymnasium, 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. And just a third thing I think I'd mention, we always get questions of, my line is always the longest. I will tell you, I've been looking at this issue for years and years. We have three incoming lines. At the end, I, I swear, it is a third, a third, and a third. So if your line is long, the next line will be longer in the next hour or so. So it, it's just it's really interesting. People ask all the time. So I just thought I'd share that with you. We would still look to see, make sure that we do it a third, a third, and a third, but it does come out that way. So just in case you're interested, if you're in a long line, the other ones will be long other parts of the day, so. Deb, when you say a uh, 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 student workshop, does that mean the students do not have school that day? I believe so. I, I, what I, what I, I um, termed that carefully because I'm not sure if the teachers still have to go, but I believe that the students at least have a workshop. I was going to clarify that today and the offices were closed so I couldn't, but so, I was, so that's why I say student workshop. Okay. Well, so. those of us parents will double check that to make sure our children are playing hooky. Thank you, Deb. Uh, now it's my great honor to uh, welcome Representative Jane Eberly to the podium for her to um, give out an award. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Jane Eberly, State Rep for South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, and I'm also joined by uh, State Rep Kim Monahan Derrick, who just pulled up on her Segway. <laughs> parked out front. Um, and it's, it's a great pleasure to be here. And thank you, Chairman Lennon, for helping us arrange this evening. We've been trying for a while to get a date that works for everyone. Members of the council, Mr. McGovern and Ms. Lane. Um, it is my pleasure to um, come before you tonight to just talk a little bit about our wonderful friends and neighbors out at the Inn by the Sea. I know that everybody is aware of the beautiful facility and all the wonderful things that happen there, but I'm not quite sure the community is aware of the depth and breadth of activities that um, members of the, the staff at the Inn are involved in and the Inn itself and what it um, offers to the community. So with your indulgence, I, and honestly, this was the hardest thing to get these people to agree to come because not one of them wants to get any public recognition. So this is an extraordinary <laughs> um, accomplishment so that they have everybody sitting here and I'm very pleased that they were um, agreeable to do this. Um, we, sitting with us tonight, um, Sarah Masterson is the general manager of the Inn by the Sea. Lori Ennis is the executive meeting manager. And Ronnie Q is the Public Relations and uh, Green Programs Manager at the Inn. Lori serves on the South Portland Cape Elizabeth Chamber Board with me. Deb Lane will um, look back at her fond memories of having been a memories of having been a board member too. In fact, Deb and I were the Communications Committee. I think we had one other person <laughs> back when. Um, so the work that the South Portland Cape Elizabeth Chamber does is um, important in that it connects the local businesses with the communities and really keeps a focus on and what happens. So the Inn is very well represented by Lori um, for the South Portland Cape Elizabeth Chamber. Um, the the uh, impetus for this coming to you tonight was the fact that both Lori and Ronnie have won um, recognition awards from their individual uh, professional organizations. And I think it's noteworthy that um, that other organizations and these groups that they're involved with have recognized their efforts um, above and beyond what they do f at the inn and, and just in their daily duties. Uh, Lori, actually, it was some, um, she's getting ready to hand over the reins of her uh, award to the next person, but last year at the uh, um, Greater Portland Regional Chamber annual meeting, Lori was recognized as the volunteer of the year. And 
um, she didn't know she was going to get this award, and we were sitting at the table, and her whole family was hiding in, an, in another room, and they started out by reading this. Our Volunteer of the Year winner has been a very active board member in her community chamber since 2003. A person with an upbeat, can-do attitude and tons of energy, she is organized and is always on top of what is going on. She has been an active in Member Appreciation Day, and at this point, Lori started to get this look on her face, <laughs> um, even offering to take on extra bags if there were not enough people to deliver, to deliver um, sort of informational bags to all the members. She's been chair of the events committee, works on the career day committee, and has worked tirelessly securing hosts for business after fives, as well as working on holiday fest, and at that point she knew it was Lori. Not only in her volunteer work with the chamber, but in her work at the end, she has handled all levels of responsibilities effortlessly. And that's what won Lori the award, and she was very well deserved. And she got up to do her favorite thing, which is make a speech. The only good thing was she didn't know until two seconds before she had to do it that she had to do it. So, um, And then Ronnie was recognized by the Greater Portland Convention Vis Visitors Bureau. Um, they have an annual meeting, I think is where all these awards are given out. This was in the spring. And these are very uh, prestigious awards that are, are given out to people in the community for their efforts on behalf of Maine tourism and economic development. And Ronnie was awarded the um, Member of the Year at the Bureau. Um, she was recognized for her outstanding work in public relations, environmental practices, and overall commitment to marketing the region. Um, and this is, this is very important for the town of Cape Elizabeth to have this quality of, of um, promotion going on from within your borders. So I thought it was worthy of note. And, and the end, um, aside from all the things, as I mentioned, that you are aware of, there are all kinds of activities that the inn is a part of. For instance, the Beach to Beacon, they, are the, they host the press release, and there's a continental breakfast that they give to uh, everybody at, that, at, um, at the press conference. At, they have an annual pumpkin carving. I don't know if any of you have ever been or taken your kids, but this is a big party that the inn puts on for the whole community. And there are dozens and dozens of pumpkins, and children come, and there's stations all over the yard, and decorating stations, and cookies, and cider. And, and uh, then, actually, for a few years, I've been the um, judge of the carving contest. And after I did it the first year, I said, I will never do that again. It is the hardest job I've ever had. But I went back for a few more times. It's just a wonderful party that th they throw. Um, you might have heard and probably have heard about the uh, habitat restoration project that the Inn is doing with the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife and the State Bureau of uh, Conservation. Um, to re parks to restore uh, cottontail rabbit habitat in that area, and it's going to be a huge environmental plus for the for the rabbits, you know, for the area when that gets reestablished. If you've ever seen the native gardens with the indigenous plantings, um, all the birds and butterflies and everything that are attracted to um, the plantings out there make it just a wonderful setting for guests and for um, the animals themselves. The environmental uh, efforts that the Inn has um, promoted are heating with 5% biofuel. The whole campus is heated with biofuel. Um, they have used recycled um, materials in the drywall and a lot of the construction that they've done. They have solar panels. They encourage recycling among their guests and all kinds of other green types of lodging measures. And the Inn was actually awarded one of the first uh, green lodging awards. Is that correct? I had. Silver Lead certification. Um, they employ a lot of uh, local students and residents of this area, South Portland, Cape, and Scarborough, so they're a wonderful employer. Um, and I think it's worthy to note, too, that even you know, for years, these practices have made the inn a leader in the industry. And of when Maureen McQuaid, former owner, was awarded the innkeeper of the year by both um, the uh, Maine Office of Tourism and the Maine Innkeepers, Asso Innkeepers Association. And Ronnie, through her work as the chair of the Regional Assistant Committee for the Marketing of Maine Office of Tourism, is promoting the state out there in the whole World Wide Web um, as a place to come and, and recreate in Cape Elizabeth at the Inn by the Sea. So I just wanted to publicly um, thank my good friends at the Inn and recognize the work that they do and that the Inn does as um, one of the I would say, is it the largest business in Cape Elizabeth? 
Uh, probably the largest non-public business. Okay. Um, non-governmental. And wonderful neighbors. So if you have any questions or comments, I have a qualified staff here who <laughs> can answer anything, but otherwise I would just um, um, ask you to appreciate the efforts of the Inn along with the rest of the state and the world and guests and, and employees and, and everybody else. So thank you very much for inviting us. I didn't know if anybody else wanted to say a word. Minute, because Jane's done a fabulous job. Uh, on behalf of the staff and Sarah and the ownership, the Inn by the Sea, I just want to thank Cape Elizabeth. There isn't a day that doesn't go by that we in the Inn don't appreciate this beautiful, natural, gorgeous place that we operate the Inn in. It is, of course, Cape Elizabeth, of course, is the driver for all of the people who come to visit us. But we also, whether we're hosting, you know, jazz on the lawn for Cape residents or pumpkin carving contests or beach cleanups, we love the interaction. We love being uh, a neighbor here at in Cape Elizabeth. And we greatly appreciate the, the um, openness of the town, the ability to talk to Mike McGovern when we have issues and Maureen O'Mara. Um, it's wonderful to be working in an environment where the doors are open and we can get answers to questions immediately and great support. I also want to thank our state representatives. Jane Eberly has been helping me in and working through issues and helping us find schools to give books to for our giving tree, et cetera, and doing this horrible job of judging pumpkin carvings. So it's fabulous. And then also to be able to call Kim and Jane when we have issues that we're concerned about and they respond enormously. So thank you very much to Cape Elizabeth and thank you to our wonderful state representatives for supporting the end because it really is a wonderful place to do business and we're very appreciative of the town. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a very quick story that's appropriate. Two weeks ago about, we spent a weekend up at um, Belgrade Lakes on Great Pond. A friend loaned us their house and we were sitting out on the dock and this dad came canoeing down the lake with two children, exhausted, because he was paddling us. And when he said, do you mind if we pull up and rest? And we said, sure. So he pulled up, docked his canoe. They got out and we got chatting. And he was from New York and he was doing a tour of Maine, visiting. And we said, oh, where are you, where are you visiting? And he said, well, we're here. And then we're going to go on to Moosehead Lake, and then we're going down to Bar Harbor um, at Mount Desert Island. And then he paused and he said, but what we're really excited about, the, 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 the best part about our trip is going to be the last two nights we're going to splurge and we're going to stay in by the sea in Cape Elizabeth. Do you know that, Cape Elizabeth? And I said, actually, we're from Cape Elizabeth, so we got chatting, and they were so excited to come to In by the Sea and see Cape and go to the beach and to have dinner in Portland. And I thought that was a really interesting, wonderful moment where they were hitting all the hot spots in Maine, but the one that they were most excited about was our very own In by the Sea. So thank you. OK. Chairman Lennon. Yes. Uh, I, too, have a story. My daughter worked there for a couple of years in housekeeping. And she said it was one of the greatest places to work, fabulous team, and a lot of support for, you know, a young person who is uh, probably their first job. But um, she loves it, loved it, and she made a lot of money. And she's very happy about that. But anyway, just, a, just a, the report, thank you so much, uh, Jane, for that. Um, you know, it is a great place to work and live and bring your family up, and it's it's, you know, organizations like the Inn that have contributed to the quality of life that exists here. So, again, my hat's off to you, and I'm glad now to know about all of the, the accolades you've received from your peers, because that certainly says an awful lot about who you are and, and the kind of contribution you're making to Cape Elizabeth. So, thank you. Thank you all. So, should we move along? <clears throat> Um, you guys don't have to stay for the rest of our you don't want to stay for fascinating the meeting. Thank you very much. I hope we'll all see you when we're there for dinner or what <laughs> guests. Thank you. Um, review of the August 13 minutes. Do I have a motion? Jessica? I move we <clears throat> approve the August 13, 2012 minutes. Seconded. Any corrections, comments, edits? All those in favor? Five. Um, next item is the public hearing for the proposed amendments of the Town Ways Ordinance. 
Are you here for that? Do you want to say a few words before we? Or no, do you, you just want to be here in case we have questions. OK. So I will open the public hearing. Um, but seeing no one here to speak on this topic, I will then close the public hearing, and we will go to the item itself. Do I have a motion? Jessica? I move we accept the proposed amendment to the Town Ways Ordinance, uh, thanking the Ordinance Committee for reviewing uh, issues relating to the Town Ways Ordinance and adopt the proposed amendment. Seconded. Discussion? I'd just like to thank Bob Malley and uh, Maureen McGovern for, I mean, uh, that was a Freudian that slip. Was a Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, for uh, all the work they did on this. And again, I think that uh, this was another, another example of the quality folks that we have on staff and the ability to look at the, the issues in a practical way um, and solve some of the administrative issues that existed by forcing the town council to act in a quasi-judicial way last year which was most uncomfortable. And now that process, based on the way that this has been structured, will go to the zoning board. Having been on that, I, I applaud this. It's a, it's a really <laughs> wonderful idea. And so thank you, Bob. And thank you, Jim, for the many, many, many items each month that we have on our agenda that begin yeah. or end or somehow land on your, on well, your you. committee first. Thank you for adding more. <laughs> so uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Um, item 122, the administrative code proposed technical amendments. And uh, once again, we have a public hearing, so I will open the public hearing. And seeing no one here to discuss it, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Jessica? I move <clears throat> that we approve. Uh, the draft motion, the town council adopts the proposed technical amendments to the administrative code. Seconded. Discussion? Yeah, I just want to clarify that we will renumber as needed following the adoption. Thank you. Other comments, questions? All those in favor? Uh, item 132, the sign ordinance review. Um, I had asked that this be placed on the agenda, and it essentially has to do with those very temporary signs that the, in general, the restaurants put up that are chalkboard. You've probably seen them, and they're um, quite small, and they put them in, in front of the property, and they sometimes will say a daily something on the menu or an event or whatever. And Caitlin actually was the one that brought it to my attention because she had been speaking with the good table. Right. Do you want to say a little bit? Sure. Um, the Gatuna Labels owner asked me if it was possible to look into, you know, why the temporary signs can only be up for three months out of the year when, you know, a bulk of the business is summer season, essentially. I mean, so if they could have it up a little longer and then looking at, you know, since they pay so much in taxes already, why they have to pay fees to have a sign up on top of everything else. So she just asked that, you know, the ordinance committee look into it and be given the opportunity for businesses and the like to have an opinion on it. That makes sense to me. I mean, it, if it draws in more customers, which I think it seems to, I'm always kind of interested what's on the board, truck board for that day. Essentially, they're asking for a longer duration to be allowed out, correct? Now it's three months and they're asking for an extension right. of that and perhaps to waive the fee. So, Jim, once again. Thank you. Do you mind if we turf this to your? <laughs> it's going to come this way anyway, <laughs> regardless of what. Add this to the, the long, long list. Um, so do I have is, my? Well, uh, is it is the link? Does language cover the fee issue? Um, the sign ordinance relating to temporary signs, is that inclusive enough, or do, or should it state? Should the charge state that you're asking us to look at? Uh, I think the fee might be in the ordinance. Okay, I just want to make sure that it's encompassing all the things you wish to have looked at. That's all. I think we're just looking at can the duration be larger? Yep. Um, and is there, sh do you guys think there should be a fee attached or not a fee? Okay. All right. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Do I have a motion? Oh, do we already, do we already have a motion? No, no you don't. Not do you have yet. a motion?
Caitlin. Uh, I guess I move that we have the ordinance committee review the sign ordinance as you know written. Second. <laughs> temporary sign. The temporary signs are right. Second. Jim doesn't want a second because he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, second it, then second it, so then we can vote. Yeah, all those in favor? Oh, any discussion? I have a question. Um, in that ordinance, it indicates permit fees. The town council should adopt a schedule of signed permit fees. Is there a schedule? Do you know, Mike? I'm looking it up as we speak. I anticipated the question, but not soon enough. Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, why I want to make sure that it's covered. I'm assuming if you have a, t a permanent sign, you don't pay a fee on it, right? Sorry. <clears throat> it, it doesn't show up on our comprehensive fee schedule, but there must have been. Oh, here it is, signed permit. Uh, it's $25. For the whole season? Permit. For each permit. And if you want to put that chalkboard out front, you, you get one permit? My understanding from listening to Lisa at the Good Table is that she gets a permit for a month at a time, three months is allowed, so she's paying 25 a month. I'm not positive on it, that's just what I was informed of. So maybe that can be a little piece of what you... Yeah, I, uh, although, you know, I, I do want to comment that as we do our benchmarks, we look at different issues. One of the areas where we, where as a percentage of our budget is least supported is with fees and, uh, you know, business type licensing and permits. So, uh, you know, I, I just point that out. You know, I think, you know, the, the, the sense that, you know, we're awash in fees or that this unreasonable fees, what, whatever we charge in fees is a reduction on everyone's property taxes. So this is, is in essence, you know, if you reduce the fee like this, it's transferring uh, the revenue requirement onto property taxes. So it would be 75 for three months and that would be 150 for six. If you drew in two or three customers, that would well, cover your... They're, they're only allowed three months now, so the fee they're looking to be, have waived is... is but they're asking for six months, so... It's 150 bucks. Oh, Chair Lennon. What is, Mike, do you see the, the duration? I, I don't think it was clear what, what they're paying for how long. I know Caitlin was, was, uh, wasn't sure about it. Do you show that? I mean, if, <clears throat> is it $25 per month? And my, my understanding, it's $25, but I'd want to confirm that with Bruce. Okay. You know, it could be that someone applies for a single permit for 30 separate days. I, you know, I, I'm not sure. You know, for the three 30-day periods, I want to see if he consistently does it that way or if some businesses, you know, some business might come in and apply all at once and get one permit. I don't know. I mean, should we, I mean, is this something that we should get information on before? Or we send this to ordinance well, or can it, this all get done it, together? If you send it to the ordinance committee, I mean, we're going to do this, this research and listen to what, what, whatever is you know, actual. We're going to listen to citizens as well. I'm sure that the manager is going to weigh in on it as well. Yeah. And we're going to look at uh, our you know, neighboring communities and, and, and come back to you with, with something, whatever that is. You know, I think but, the point I'm really trying to make is everyone doesn't want to pay fees. Right. And, you know, and it's easy on a one-off to say, oh, we'll do away with the fee. Yeah. You know, cumulatively, you know, we get over $100,000 a year from building permit fees and other miscellaneous fees. Well, my vision but, but, is that the ordinance committee will address these separately. Right. You'll look at duration, right. and you'll come to some recommendation for us, and then you'll look at fees, and they might be not related. You might say yes on duration, no right. on yeah. reducing fees, or whatever you guys think. Yeah, I just like to be transparent, and you know, if, if I have a viewpoint, I, I, I try to express it at the largest possible forum, and I just, I'm just sort of you know, letting the council know when this issue comes up, this is a point that you might expect me to make. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing tonight is voting to send it to ordinance. Everybody happy with that? Uh, 
Oh, I'm I, thrilled I, with that. I'm <laughs> sure you are. Because you've done such an excellent, yeah, right. professional, <laughs> amazing job with that. No, people. no, no. I don't know about that. Anyway. All those in favor of sending it to the Ordinance Committee. Thank, Thank you, you very it. much. So, now is the time for citizen opportunity for discussions not on the agenda, but seeing no citizens currently in the audience, we will skip that and go to adjournment. Do I have a motion? Jessica? I move we adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Thank you very much.